Hey there, today on Behind Closed Doors, we're painting a plague bearer of Nurgle. Man, I love these guys. They're so gross looking. Everything starts with a base, and here we're using Cadian Flesh Tone, quite watered down on the wet palette. You have to be careful with flesh tones. I find the GW ones can often be quite thick, so you want it at a nice consistency before paint touches model, so you don't get any bumpy bits. And you don't have to worry too much about coverage here, as we're doing two coats, and there's gonna be a lot of layers on top of this by the end. And you wanna base coat everything here that's not going to be metal or teeth with the Cadian flesh, even the innards, as we're gonna be coloring all that stuff with glazes later on. I'm also using an older brush for this base coating because there's quite a lot of texture on these models, so you can quickly ruin your brush with this kind of aggressive base coating. If you use an airbrush, you could definitely use it here too, whatever works for you. Now we're going to mix equal parts Cadian flesh and iron rack skin together, and do a rough and heavy highlight on all the skin and organic parts. You don't have to worry about being too neat with this, even though it's a highlight, it all just adds to the final effect on the model. Highlight his little plague cheeks there. Iron Rack skin is going to act like a bone or off-white colour mixed with the skin tone here, but it also has a slight grey-green tone to it, so it's going to work well with the overall vibe of the mini. Don't forget to hit all the little pustules and innards too. Any metal bits can be painted with a 50-50 mix of Rhinox Hide and Iron Warriors, and this is just going to create a nice, dingy, kind of rusted metal look that we'll highlight later. You can use any darker silver for this, really. I'm a big fan of Iron Warriors because it's super dark, um, and it works great for this purpose. On this model, it's only just the Plague Sword, but you may have other metal bits and bobs dotted about on whatever you're painting, and it can all be based with this colour. We're going to do a heavy overbrush on the base here with Skaven Blight Dinge. I like to get any dry brushing or overbrushing sorted out early on in the piece, um, just because it can be a messy process sometimes. I've got some sand and gravel glued down to the base, but I'm going to be adding some toxic puddles later, so I've left a few areas flat, just painting over all of it for the time being, as I'm going to sort that out later. I'm using a real old brush for this because dry brushing over sand is absolutely brutal on bristles, so don't be doing this with your good brushes, otherwise you're going you're gonna to sandpaper them. Finally, a few details can be painted with XV88. I'm doing the teeth and the, the claws with this, just to act as a nice base for the bone colours. This is probably one of my most used colours, XV88. It's just great for base coating so many things. You'll see this one pop up a lot in the videos. We're bringing out the Nuln Oil to give us some shading on the whole model. And this not only unifies all the base coats, but also makes it a lot more clear where we're going to be applying all the highlights. If you're really neat with your base coats and already have all your black lining visible, or you like to add it later with pin washes, then you can skip a wash like this sometimes. I just find this to be the most efficient way of getting the effect I'm after. I'm putting some on the base too, because spray undercoats can often miss the sand texture, leaving some patchy bits, and we want this nice and dark. I'm going to dry brush the base with Dawnstone before putting any layers on the model, so I don't have to be so careful with it. Dry brushing bases can be done at any stage in the painting process, and if you get a bit on the feet, it's just going to look like dirt, so it's not a big deal, but let's just get out of the way now. Seeing a bit of the base done also helps me visualise the completed model better, so I find it quite helpful. Going back to our skin mix here, and adding some fairly heavy highlights, but leaving all the null oil in the recesses for the shading. The Nuln Oil darkens the shadows, but also settles in the deepest crevices to create two levels of shading, so you don't want to be kind of obscuring any of that with these highlights, even though they're fairly heavy. A final highlight on the skin and organs with pure iron rack skin. We're going to be putting the glaze over this, so it doesn't need to be, you know, a super extreme highlight, just a nice general highlight over the whole model. And we're going to do our final highlights after the glaze is done. 
Now he's been looking a little weird up until this point because he's not green, so we're going to fix that with the Plague Bearer Flesh Glaze. This is mixed about 50-50 with Lamin Medium just to keep it nice and transparent. And the key with glazes is to keep them thin because you can always add more on, but if it's too opaque, it's going to ruin the shading and highlighting we've done on the skin so far. I keep a, a bottle of Plague Bearer Glaze mixed for this specific purpose for consistency, but different shades don't matter and they'll, they'll work with the Nurgle theme if you have some variation. You don't need to paint this in any of the wounds. Um, we're coming back with some pink after this. I find the Citadel Contrast paints very useful for glazes because they're already at a nice consistency. And you only have to dilute them a little depending on what you're painting and the individual pigment of the contrast paint itself. But any of these glazes can be made with medium and traditional paints. I do that sometimes, but for often used colors, I just find it easy to pick up the contrast paint. The second glaze we're doing is with Volopus Pink in all the wounds and stuff like that. And this is only thinned a little because I want it to be quite vibrant. A rich wound color will contrast nicely with the pale green flesh. And I put a little bit in his mouth too because a glaze like that can be easier than trying to paint the detail in there properly. And if you don't have this contrast paint, because it's only a little kind of small area of the model, you can mix your own with medium and any kind of rich pink color. So when you glaze something, you can inevitably lose some of the prominent highlights because it's blending and subduing everything. So I like to come through at the end with a pure iron rack skin highlight and just get some nice definition on key focal points. Besides the face, the hands and around the wounds are great areas to add some final highlights. I also like to hit all the little pustules to make them extra disgusting. I'm adding a bit of the Volopus Pink glaze to the edges of some of the wounds, just so they don't look so neat from the edge highlighting. It can be good to even thin this further and do a few coats just to make it nice and subtle. I think if you put too much on, it can look a bit garish. We've got to paint his weird little Nurgle eyes. They look a bit spidery, so you could just paint these black, but I'm going to paint them yellow because that's how I picture Nurgle eyes. Be careful with painting details like this after you've finished something like the skin because you don't want to have to do any touch-ups. Just a spot of white for the yellow to sit on. Make sure you leave some black around the edge of the eye to help them pop a bit more from the skin. Finally, a little dot of yellow. You can go back after this and add a tiny dot of white to all the eyes, but I think they look fine as is, particularly for tabletop standard. So this model is mainly skin, but we still have to go through and add a few more details, starting with some highlights on the rusted blade with Ironbreaker. And any mid-range silver will be completely fine for this and create a nice contrast with the dark rusted areas. And Games Workshop has a great range of technical paints if you want to add more effects after this. You can experiment with stuff like Typhus Corrosion and Nilek Oxide, for example. Sometimes though, I just like a bit more of a plain effect. The teeth and nails need a bit of Ushabti bone. Always be careful when doing these precision details at the end. I find it's good to brace my hands together if there's any shaking going on, and I definitely steer clear of the coffee. Just a few little bings of white on the bone areas to bring out the contrast with the rest of the model. And don't forget his little toe claws. The last thing we have to do is finish off this guy's toxic base. A light dry brush of Administratum Grey will pick out the texture nicely before we put the pools in. I'm keeping it fairly simple with this base, but it's something that's easy to replicate over lots of models. When I apply the mix of sand and gravel, I leave some random shaped pools untextured. And this makes the pools look more like they are, you know, just sitting in the base as opposed to on top of the gravel. Now these are being painted green to act as a base for the Nurgle's Rot. It's not really too important what green you use here. Lauren Forest just seemed to me like it had a good tone for this. Quickly whack a bit of Abaddon Black around the rims. And if you want to varnish your model, now's the time to do it, as technical paints like Nurgle's Rot will be dulled by a matte varnish, for example. 
Add in the pools with Nurgle's Rot. I think two or three coats of this is really the sweet spot. It's important to make sure it dries properly between the coats though. I also like to ever so slightly push the Nurgle's Rot up against the gravel to make it look a bit more realistic. And that's the Plague Bearer done. I honestly had so much fun painting this model. I just want to go out right now and <laughs> paint a whole army of these guys. Nurgle is such great models to paint because there's so much room for experiments and a little messiness and maybe even some happy accidents. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. And we'll see you next time on Behind Closed Doors.